Hi everyone, my name is Mark Robinson and I'm a Senior Research Fellow in the Institute for Social Science Research, or ISSR, at the University of Queensland. In this presentation, I'm going to provide you with an overview of a monitoring, evaluation and learning framework, which I'll refer to as the MEL framework, that we co-developed with Queensland's Health Promotion Agency, Health and Wellbeing Queensland. To begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the various lands from which you are watching this presentation and to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. OK, so Health and Wellbeing Queensland is an agency of the Queensland Government, an independent statutory body established in 2019 under the Health and Wellbeing Act. And as an organisation, it has the mandate to do things differently to push boundaries and to work in new ways to improve population health and to reduce health inequities. A key initial focus of the organisation is on the prevention of obesity, a major public health challenge, a, a wicked problem that requires multifaceted and sustained approaches in order to achieve a significant impact in terms of population health. In September 2020, so in its first year of existence, Health and Wellbeing Queensland established a research partnership with ISSR in order to collaboratively develop, support and build capacity in research and evaluation across their organisational portfolio of work. One of the initial priorities for the research partnership was to develop a male framework for the organisation to allow it to embed monitoring, evaluation and learning activities into its business operations and to systematically measure what it does, how well it does it and crucially the difference that it makes. The development of the MEL framework was heavily influenced by systems thinking, literature and approaches, recognising that for an organisation like Health and Wellbeing Queensland, which aims to catalyse action across sectors, uh, a mere reliance on trends and population level indicators as a way to assess impact and influence is insufficient. That said, systems change initiatives are notoriously hard to measure and so any accompanying male framework requires a reconsideration of the types of evidence needed from a systems point of view and how such evidence can be used to measure changes from initial conditions in order to capture emerging impacts and to enable continuous learning. The MEL framework is centred around a high level theory of change, which you can see on your screen now. And this theory of change illustrates how Health and Wellbeing Queensland's actions will influence the systems associated with obesity and health inequity in Queensland and how ultimately it will contribute to population level outcomes and impacts. The theory of change follows the structure of a logic model, starting at the bottom level, which is the so-called organisational enablers for change, which concern those fundamental characteristics that need to be in place for Health and Wellbeing Queensland to have the influence it wants. So this includes the organisation's communications, its strategies and activities and outputs, its reputation and also its ways of working. These conditions can and should be evaluated and tracked and represent important markers of progression as the organisation evolves and matures, recognising it as still a relatively new agency. The orange level shows the four systems change components that we conceptualise based on the available literature. And this level aims to recognise those parts of the system that Health and Wellbeing Queensland aims to influence. And those systems change components are policies, practices, networks and mindsets. As I said, these components were identified by drawing on other influential systems change examples and they aim to represent the conditions that hold population obesity and health inequities in place, but to do so in a way that provides a sense-making process for the organisation to understand and organise the messiness of the real world into concepts that um, will allow Health and Wellbeing Queensland to measure the change that it is contributing to. 
As noted earlier, population outcomes usually take a long time to change and therefore Health and Wellbeing Queensland will use instances of impact as a way to demonstrate the media influence of their, of their work. These are evidenced impacts that can occur at the individual, organisational or community level before population level changes have emerged and they provide a good indication that change is happening across the system and an opportunity to enable learning about what is working, for whom and in what circumstances. And drawing on Mark Friedman's results-based accountability approach, the grey dotted line that you see across the theory of change recognises that Health and Wellbeing Queensland can be held accountable for achieving elements below this line, the so-called ceiling of accountability. But going above that ceiling, those high level population outcomes and impact require a whole of community and whole of government approach when addressing complex systems change. The MEL framework is intentionally weighted in terms of its activities towards monitoring, evaluation and learning, primarily concerned with capturing evidence below that line of accountability. Of course, this theory of change is presented in a non-complex way. It does not attempt to represent the whole complexity of the systems of drivers that influence obesity, such as that provided many years ago in the obesity foresight map but rather it attempts to provide a pragmatic way in to thinking about what the organisation is trying to achieve and to provide a guiding structure in order to operationalise the complexity of systems change into concepts that will allow for complexity aware monitoring, evaluation and learning activities and methods so that Health and Wellbeing Queensland can show evidence of the contribution that it is making. The male activities within the framework have been grouped into five main categories, which consist of mixed method approaches selected on the basis that they are appropriate for evaluating different levels of systems change. And they consist of both traditional sort of process and outcome evaluation approaches, as well as approaches that have drawn on developmental evaluation principles. So to assess organisational enablers for change, we have proposed an organisation and stakeholder survey um, supplemented with interviews, as well as a tool to assess the extent to which Health and Wellbeing Queensland's portfolio of work is balanced in terms of its likely impact on health equity, given that as a primary purpose of the agency. For signals of systems change, we have proposed the inclusion of stories of most significant change with both staff and stakeholders, as well as the identification of systems change indicators at the project level. So this is like traditional key performance indicators, KPIs, but specifically focused on one or more of those systems change components that you saw in the theory of change. Flagship evaluations will provide an in-depth assessment of a subset of specific projects, which due to their cost, their profile and or their focus should be supported with their own detailed evaluation plans. And these will provide a crucial source of evidence for demonstrating those instances of impact. And of course, we can't forget about the um, high level trends and population level outcomes. And so we've proposed the use of routine surveillance data for that purpose and um, to provide an ongoing picture of statewide progress. And we've proposed a core set of indicators that Health and Wellbeing Queensland um, should monitor. And finally, we emphasise the importance of organisational learning, which is the use of insights from multiple sources of data to inform organisational decision making and adaption. And specifically, we've proposed the establishment or the continuation of after action reviews, communities of practice and annual monitoring, evaluation and learning reflection workshops. And it's hoped that these core activities will be embedded into the organisation's strategic operations and it will allow data and evidence to be collected in order to answer a set of key high level evaluation questions, which, as you can see, have been organised according, according to the theory of change. And these really help to clarify and communicate the purpose of the overall framework. 
In this visual, which you see now, is rather busy, but this summarises the male framework and articulates how the components and activities it contains ha will um, contribute to answering those key evaluation questions, which are underpinned by a set of key principles and how this all links to the theory of change. And to finish, I'd like to reflect on some of the learning that we have observed through the co-development of this framework, and more recently in terms of moving from conceptualization to implementation. So if we start with some of the challenges that we encountered, these included the fast pace that the organization was moving at during the time of the framework's development. Health and Wellbeing Queensland was very much in startup mode, and so important business processes had not yet been established and things were changing on a fairly frequent basis. And of course, it's one thing having a framework and it's another thing implementing it. And while one of the key principles of the framework was for it to be implementable, um, we're in that phase at the moment and the rea reality of trying to embed core male activities into a very fast paced and busy organisation while it's still evolving and maturing is that it is, is difficult. A number of enablers have made this ambitious framework possible and supported it becoming endorsed by the um, agency's executive committee. So these included a high level of trust, which was forged through strong relationships. I very much feel part of the Health and Wellbeing Queensland um, community and spend a lot of time in their offices, which meant I could be responsible and um, sorry, responsive and adaptable to their changing needs. And also I only recently joined academia after a decade working for a public health agency in Scotland. And so I was able to draw on a lot of my own personal experience, which I think proved helpful in terms of the framework's development, but also in a range of other organisational settings that I contributed to mostly on an in-kind basis. And so those enablers have also helped to create a strong working relationship between Health and Wellbeing Queensland and ISSR, and that's helped to stimulate new ideas for projects and opportunities within an authorising environment. And so we very much see the partnership strengthening over the time period of the male framework being developed. And finally, just to reflect on some of the impact and influence that I think the development of the framework has had, the Chief Executive recently stated in a meeting that the framework is influencing everything that we do here. Um, and that includes informing the basis of a new approach to how they design and manage a suite of high value prevention programmes that the organisation funds. The systems change components were also recently used to guide the structure of the evaluation of one of Health and Wellbeing Queensland's flagship programmes, Pick of the Crop. And although anecdotal, I definitely believe that the male framework has helped to advance thinking around evaluation and thinking around systems within the organisation and to get people on board um, with why it's so important. So thank you for listening. Apologies for going over the, um, the scheduled 10 minutes. Um, I'd like to say thanks to all my colleagues at ISSR and Health and Wellbeing Queensland who were involved in this project and if you're interested in learning more I look forward to um, speaking to you at the conference. Thanks very much.